authority, right? Because we relinquish, oh man, our city's just the worst. Our family's messed up, our job, our company. No, we're called to live and walk in authority. And I'm not, and listen, I'm not diminishing the reality of situations, right? But you're called as royalty. You're called to shift cities. You're, you're called to host the presence of God in such a way that it changed the atmosphere and environment around you. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, we can't become new creations with the, without the power of God's grace. Amen? And that same power lives, us, lives in us and allows us to walk in the new covenant. Amen? And, uh, you know, although we're called to good works and the advancing of the kingdom, that flows out of who we are as new creations empowered by God's grace. Right. Now, some people get it a little backwards, and they're like, well, I'm this king, this queen, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, so I don't have to do anything. That's entitlement. <laughs> no, when you understand who you are, from that place of intimacy, from that place of authority, everything flows, right? Right? And we move from that place of intimacy and authority. Grace is more than favor. This is another Joe McIntyre quote. Grace is more than favor. Now, I like favor. Amen. Amen. I want more favor in my life. Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. I want favor with God. I want it with man, too. Right? Grace is more than favor. Grace is power. Grace is adding His ability to our availability. Don't you love that? Grace is adding His ability to our availability. Right? So, if you want more grace, what do you need? More availability. God, I'm available for your grace because you want to empower me to do kingdom works, to do what you've called me to do. Grace is always empowering grace. Amen? Grace doesn't excuse us from kingdom works, but actually empowers us to do what Jesus did as well as step into greater works. We're called to do the things that Jesus did, and we're called to do even greater works. There, there are people on the earth right now that have raised more dead people than Jesus did. Right? Is that a staggering thought? Because they've learned to step into grace. Right? They've made themselves available to step into grace. You know, some people are amening and some people are like, I don't know about that. Right? Remember Randy Clark talking about one of the first times he went to Mozambique? And Randy's a general, right, in the faith and you know, he went to Mozambique to, to teach for Roland and Heidi Baker for Iris Global. And he said, I was really intimidated because he said, I was ministering to leaders that had raised people from the dead. And he said, and I'd never done that. Right? But isn't it powerful that there's grace to empower us to do what we've been called to do? Amen. And we'll, if we'll step into it. I love, you guys have heard this over and over, but I have to tell it again because I just love it, right? The story about uh, Roland and Heidi Baker, their, their Bible college, and the lady who was in their college who couldn't read, and they're like, we don't know what to do. How are we going to graduate this woman from Bible college? She can't read. Well, she raised someone from the dead, and they're like, automatic pass, <laughs> right? Right? You raise someone from the dead, we will automatically graduate you from Bible school. Those of you that are in my supernatural school, if you haven't yet turned any homework in, Marshall. <laughs> <all> you, <laughs> I wasn't naming names, but my wife did. 
if you'll just raise somebody from the dead, automatic pass. I won't even let make you read anything. You don't even have to come back to class. <laughs> Maybe two people. If you raise two from the dead, you don't have to come back to class. Right? Now, all this is really powerful, isn't it? That we've been put to death, we've been resurrected, we've been called out of darkness, He's brought us into a kingdom of light, He's given us grace that empowers us, but did you know it even gets better than that? That He's actually seated us with Him in the heavenly places. Right? It says that according to Ephesians, and this is in Ephesians chapter 2, Verses 6 and 7. Ephesians 2, 6 and 7. That the Father has raised us up with Him, speaking of Christ, and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come He might show the surpassing richness of His grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Did you know that you are a trophy of grace right now? You are an absolute trophy of grace that not only did God call you out of darkness and bring you into a family, bring you into a kingdom, give you a new nature, but He has seated you with Christ in heavenly places as a demonstration of His grace and His kindness. And He says, okay, everybody, all you principalities and powers, look, Logan is seated with me in heavenly places far above all rule and dominion. Look, look, joy is seated with me in heavenly places. She's a trophy of my grace. Right? Lisa is seated with me in heavenly places. Everybody, I want you to see I've demonstrated my kindness because she was really messed up. <laughs> she says, yes, she was. She was, she's not now, right? <laughs> God's given us so far beyond what we could ask, think, or expect. And, and, you know, we're not unworthy servants. Now, do we serve God? Yes. Yes, we serve Him. But we're joint heirs with Him. Amen. We're royalty and sharers in His throne. And He loves us so much that He gives us an invitation to share with what He's doing. Now, again, we get all excited about that and we want to run around the building and do a Jericho march and those things are amazing, right? But there's such responsibility with this. Right? Because He's like, come, I want you to participate in what I'm doing in the earth. And sometimes He won't even do things in the earth until he finds people that will partner with him. Right? Wasn't it crazy reading Genesis this week? Not this week, but in this month. When God says, Abraham, guess what I'm getting ready to do? And Abraham's like, hey, wait a minute, God. Are you sure you want to do that? What if you find 50 righteous people? God knew what he was going to do but he invited a man who walked in faith and covenant with him to dialogue with him to save the righteous out of a nation. And sometimes God will invite us to partner with him. He wants to do it, but we have to be available for his grace to touch us. And he, he's wanting to touch nations through your life. He's wanting to touch neighborhoods and families and cities and companies if you'll enter into dialogue with Him. Right? He's wanting to touch Walmart even. Right? If we'll partner with Him. Right? Because we're royalty and He gives us an invitation. Amen? He wants us to be a part of what He's doing in the earth. Right? One of my favorite scriptures is John 15, 15. And Jesus said, No longer do I call you slaves, for the slaves 
the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. He's looking for friends. Right? He's looking for those that will dialogue with him. Will you dialogue with him? Will you share in his throne? Now, gosh, that's kind of frightening, isn't it? Right? Because suddenly that changes everything when we understand identity and grace. Suddenly we realize, oh my gosh, I don't have to live in sin. I don't have to live in defeat. I don't have to live this manner. I've received all this grace and all this sonship and all this royalty. But it's because God's looking for people who will move with Him and work with Him. Amen? And change destinies of nations. Right? He's looking for friends. He's looking for friends that He can talk with. What an incredible intercessory call. Right? I want to challenge you in the days ahead. Right? Because you know, when we, when we do take time often to spend with Him, and we bring our needs, and God does, you bring your needs to friends. But you know, it's more than just about you and me. And God cares for our needs, but... God's like, you know, I'm, I'm looking for someone who'll enter into dialogue with me. Right? Will it be you? Right? Now, these are scary values, right? This it's got really real all of a sudden, didn't it? Right? But when we, we live from this place of identity and sonship, it changes everything. Right? Now, I've mentioned Heidi Baker. Heidi talks about how, you know, she has to start her day two or three hours of prayer and worship. Right? Soaking, loving Him, doing everything from that place of intimacy. And then she goes, and then I get up and I go give to the broken of the earth because she's been empowered. She knows how to begin to move in that place. I've started from that place of identity, of authority, of sonship, of intimacy. But from there I go and move into the earth. And you know what? We need both of those things. Some of us are really doers. And we go and we, we do things, right? But we need to start in the place of intimacy. And some of us just want to stay in the place of intimacy all the time and never do anything. You can get into either extreme, right? So, the value of identity and sonship. Hallelujah. The next one, the, the sixth one. And this is one of those that's such, such a no-duh thing. And yet, it's becoming less and less of a reality in the Western church because of our shifting culture. But the lordship of Jesus, Right? Our goal is that every standard, our standard in every area is the lordship of Jesus and his infallible written word. Right? Everything that we do revolves around him and revolves around what he's declared in scripture. Right? Our, our culture is shifting in many ways. And, and and the church is trying to shift in many ways. <laughs> and maybe we shift the way we do things, right? But there are truths that do not shift and change, right? And so, but, you know, Matthew 6, 33, and I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> Seek the kingdom above all else, and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. All right, I'm going to say that again. Seek the kingdom above all else, 
and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. Right? Again, we've got to be kingdom seekers. Right? We've got to be people that are seeking Him in every part of our lives and seeking His kingdom. Right? Seeking for the advancement of His kingdom, the moving forward of His kingdom. Amen? Right? That's where everything begins. Right? You know, every decision, everything I make, everything that I move forward in, I just want to say, God, I want to be living for Your kingdom. Every part of my life, God, what do you say about every part of my life? What do you desire for every part of my life? What does your word say? Right? And not just picking and choosing scriptures. Not just going to the word to find out, okay, I'm going to pull this scripture or this passage. No, what does the entirety of scripture say? Right? And, and Jesus, what do you say about my life? What are you saying? You know, because if I wasn't listening to what he was saying, there, there are certain crazy things I've done in my life just because the Lord said, this is what I want you to do because I, I want my kingdom to advance. I want my kingdom to advance and I'm looking for people to advance my kingdom. Right? I mean, when, we went to, when we went to Japan, that wasn't on our radar. And then God said, I want you to do this. And leader said, this is what we believe God is saying. And we're like, it's what God's saying. And it was a risk. It was a risk to move back to Ardmore, Oklahoma. But it's what God was saying. Right? Seek first His kingdom. Not just living a... How do I say this? Normal Christian life. Because the normal Christian life in the Word looks a lot different from what the normal Christian life in America looks like. You know, the American dream is not the Christian life. It's just not. You know, now... You know, I, we're all different and called to do different things, but what is God saying to us? What is God saying to us about our lives in seeking first the kingdom of God in His righteousness? You want all things to be added unto you? Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Right? Hallelujah. We could say a whole lot about that. Praise God. And you know, I'll, I'll just touch on, I had a lot written here that I'm not going to get to, but you know, we've got to be disciples. There, there's a difference between just, okay, I'm a believer. We've got to be disciples, right? Disciplined learners, disciplined followers that are following after him. So, praise God. Hallelujah. So, the sixth value, the Lordship of Jesus. Amen. The last one. God's love for the nations. Amen. God's love for the nations. God loves humanity, and He asks us to take the gospel of the kingdom to the nations. Going is not an option. Right? but a mandate from Jesus to his people. Amen. Matthew 28, 19, the great commission, not the great suggestion. Right? It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Right? Now, that doesn't mean that we're all supposed to pack up and go to another nation. Right? But... We probably need to be more open to that than we generally are. Right? You know, every time that you see revival and awakening, whether it's the Moravian revival, 
whether it's Azusa Street, whether it's Toronto or Pensacola, every time throughout history there's been a move of God, people get thrust into the harvest fields. Right? The Moravians sold themselves into slavery so that they could spread the gospel. Right? You know, Azusa Street sent people all over the world because they so believed that the coming of Jesus was so at hand, they gave up everything and went. Right? What was the fruit of Toronto in the 90s? It's people like Heidi Baker, who was a burnout missionary. Right? Only two churches in Mozambique. And she said one of them was on life support. She was so burnt out. Went, came to Toronto because her husband went and said, God's moving. And the, her supporters, her 90% of her support came from one church. And they said, you go to that, you go to that move and we'll, you'll lose all your support. And she said, I don't care, I'm desperate for him. And she went, and you guys, I've told the story so many times you could retell it. But it so reflects the heart and nature of God. And she was in that service and Randy was preaching that sermon about being, being spent, spending our lives. And he said it always brings a response. And he said, but this time, he said the response usually didn't come till the end. But Heidi got up and went to the front halfway through his message and he began to prophesy to her. He said, do you want the nation of Mozambique? And he began to prophesy to her about the blind sing and the deaf hearing and the dead being raised and there would be thousands of churches. And you know what? That's happening. For the first time in history, Mozambique is a Christian nation. Now it's not perfect, right? Leif Hetland, so touched by the power of God and the outpouring in Toronto that he's reached, I think it's Leif Hetland, Heidi Baker, and a, an African pastor in Ukraine named Henry Madava, I'm trying to remember the statistic that between those three ministries that all received an impartation through the Toronto outpouring, that revival, they've seen is it one million people come between them? And God's wanting to reach the earth. You know, Jesus said, you know, he said, don't, don't pray for the harvest. He said, pray for workers to be thrust into the harvest. And how can a little church in this little town between Oklahoma City and Dallas, how can it touch the nations? I don't know. But it is. And there's more to come. Right. A few months ago, I'm not going to tell the whole dream. Some of you have heard it. I had a dream, and uh, I walked with Heidi Baker through the nations. When people like that show up in my dreams, I pay attention. You know, and at one point in the dream, I even got up, went to the bathroom because I'm over 50, and uh, <laughs> went back to sleep, and the dream just picked up and continued. And even when I was awake, I could still hear the voice of the Lord through Heidi. I could hear it just as clear as day, fell back to sleep and continued to hear it. And Heidi said to me, you have to go to the nations. Did you have to go? She said, it'll cost you everything, but you have to go. You know what? That word wasn't just for me. It was for this place. It said, and I, I'm going to say a statement that she made in the dream that really frightens me. She says, if you don't go, everything you're doing here will dry up. That's hardcore serious. 
years ago, not in this building, but the building before this. And we just bought that building. And my friend Darren Begley, I just met him. I'd had lunch with him, and we stopped by the building. And he said, Brother, you're called to launch people to the nations. I was like, I know. That's what God sang to us. And he said, and God's going to give you another building. I was like, don't tell me that when I just bought this one. But there's a call, and we've, we've just barely entered into it. Right? You feel the weight of it right now? <laughs> How many of you know when God calls you to do something, there's a grace that comes with it? We're called to raise up laborers that will go to the harvest fields of the earth. Now, that may not be another nation. That may be a neighborhood, a city, right? Another state. It may be a government agency in our community that needs transformation, right? It may be a school system. It may be a company, right? But we're called to go. And God wants to reveal His heart to the nations. Amen. Though, though you know, it talks about in Revelation... 7 verse 9 chapter 7 verse 9 that before the throne there's every tribe and every tongue before the throne right God's calling us to reach every tribe and every tongue now you guys it undoes me when I I, I get undone when I talk about this stuff because I feel the weight of it I feel the the father's heart right and one of the reasons even that we started the Supernatural School was because there was a word that says God wants you to be, to write the vision and it's about the nations. Right? God's going to call many people. Don't get nervous. <laughs> Some of you may just go on one trip. Right? Some of you have already been on a trip, right? Many of you in here went with me to the nation of Haiti a year and a half ago. Right? Some of you may be called to go, to come and go, right? But if one of our core values is the nations and one of our core values is the lordship of Jesus, it means we say, God, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I'll go wherever you ask me to go. I'll say whatever you ask me to say. Because it's really not about our comfort. It's about His Lordship and what He's saying. Right? Hallelujah. I want to read, Matt, in closing, I want to read Mark chapter 16. We already read one of the commissioning accounts. Let's read another. So, you know, we're all praying for revival, aren't we? What's the fruit of revival? Right? It's people who so love God and so love others that they'll give their lives away. That sounds good in a church service, but the reality of it can be a lot more challenging. Right? Mark 16. Verse 15, and he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And some translations say, as you go into the, all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it shall not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. We're to go into all the world preaching the gospel to all creation. Right? So one of our values as a ministry right, is God's love for the nations. Did you know God said that my house shall be called a house of prayer? 
for what? For all the nations. Right. God's heart is for all humanity. Amen. And He's looking for people who will not only partner with Him because we understand that we're sons and daughters and we have a royal call, but that we will be the answer. That will be the answer. Right? One thing in closing. This is what, my third closing? <laughs> you know, Reese Howes, those of you, many of us have read the book Reese Howes' Intercessor by Norman Grubb. Don't read it unless you want to get angry and your flesh get all upset, right? But the Holy Spirit told Reese, he said, I'm never going to allow you to pray a prayer that you will not be willing to be the answer for. Yeah, that's a heavy statement. Holy Spirit wasn't messing around, was he? He's like, if I can answer this need through you, then I'm not going to have you pray. You know, don't even bother praying. Lord, give Sister Joan some money. The Lord may say, well, you do it. Lord, thrust neighbor, thrust neighbors, thrust laborers into the harvest fields. Okay, well, I'm going to thrust you. Right? Oh, Lord, I didn't want to go. I wanted somebody else to go. That's the reality. God's looking for a nation. He's looking for people. And so, you know, as we pray for revival, as we pray for awakening, understand that the natural outflow of those things is that people get thrust into the harvest fields. Hallelujah. Sorry, this wasn't a feel-good sermon, y'all. It started off really good, didn't it? <laughs> Grace, righteousness, hallelujah. But all those things are for a purpose. They're for a purpose. They empower us to do what God's called us to do. Amen? Let's stand together. Father, I just want to thank you Lord, we, we just gather in your presence today. God, we, we gather together as we've gathered to worship, as we've gathered to magnify. But Lord, we just reaffirm to you that, Lord, as you've given us certain values, Lord, it's not just a creed and it's not just words on a page, but Lord, let your kingdom come. God, let your kingdom come in this place. Lord, let your kingdom come in all of our lives. Let your kingdom come. Father, as sons and daughters, as those that share in your throne, God, we understand that there's a commission that you've given us. Father God, there's a commission you've given us. Lord, Jesus, we magnify you and we just declare that, Jesus, you are Lord. And we want to love you we love your presence, but Lord, we love your word. Lord, we love obedience. Lord, we don't ever want your presence without obedience to what you've said. And Lord, we don't ever want just uh, worship without obeying what you've said in your word. So, Lord, we just give you our lives once again. God, that we'll live with vision and we'll live with purpose. God, we'll live for your kingdom. We seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And Lord, knowing that it's from this place that all things will be given to us. Jesus, we, we love you. We give you our lives. You're so worthy. You're so worthy of our lives, our worship, our obedience. And I, I just ask even now that there would just be a fresh flow of your grace, of your impartation through all of us that will empower us and equip us and that we'll live in the manner you've called us to live. 
And Father, I pray that in areas where maybe we've missed it or areas where we say, we've been saying no to you, that you just speak to us. And God, that you give us grace to overcome. Because Lord, disobedience is sin. Lord, I pray that you give us grace to overcome, to obey, and to live righteously. And so God, we just thank you today. Thank you because you're so good and you love us. And we thank you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, just receive His grace. Amen. It empowers us. It empowers us to run the race. Amen. Praise God. Remember, um, big things coming uh, tomorrow. Supernatural School will continue. Um, Saturday healing rooms um, what else? Sunday Waylon Henderson so uh, we invite you to be here for Waylon invite a friend right invite people to come and uh, encounter what the Lord what the Lord's doing amen so if you need a prophetic ministry you can come get a prophetic word here from the prophetic team and can I just say when you come for a prophetic ministry don't tell them what to prophesy. Right? Just come and just receive what the Lord would say. They're not fortune tellers. Right? God may not want to speak about what you want Him to speak about. Or He may want you to hear that. So, right? Just come and receive if you want a prophetic word. If you need... Um, physical healing. We'll have a physical healing team here. Amen. Come and receive prayer. Will, what happened with your... Olivia was giving me a... Here, come and give a testimony real fast. Well, uh... I had a few calcium buildups in my hands, and they were right where my thumb and the tendon is, like when you move your thumb and that tendon moves with it. Well, they were right underneath that tendon, so every once in a while they'll get that tendon will get caught, and I would lose mobility in that that, and it was in both thumbs. Uh, but I, I mean, they prayed for it, and the, the swelling or the, the calcium buildup started dissolving, and I haven't had problems with it since. Amen. So praise God. It's good. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you need... Stuff's happening with our healing teams. Amen. Isn't that awesome? So just come and receive prayer if you need healing. So praise God. Bless you guys. Have a great day. Have a great week. And if we don't see you before then, we'll see you on Sunday. Amen. Bless you. Mm -hmm.